Hey guys, it's your good buddy Sheets, and we are broadcasting from the ABCA National Office, bringing you our first installment of ABCA Extra Innings, a little free baseball for all those playing at home, and yet another opportunity to continue to challenge and grow and educate, and more importantly, serve our coaches around the world, and at the same time continue to grow the game of baseball along with you. We're excited about today's episode. We're going to get to that in one second, but first, let's follow YouTube protocol here. Let's head over to this side of the screen. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, you'll see right below us. Turn on notifications so you never miss another video that we put out. Also hit the like button, we'd love to see a lot of those pop up. At the same time, leave us a comment, let us know where you'd like to see us go next. These segments inside Extra Innings won't always look like what you see today through the Skype interview. Eventually we'll be out on the baseball field, we'll be in the dugout, we'll be in the locker room, we'll go anywhere we can connect with great coaches and pull their information and share it with our community so we can all learn from successful coaches. We're excited about today's episode as we connect with Brian Green, the head coach at New Mexico State, all the way down in Las Cruces, New Mexico. At the time of recording, the Aggies were leading the NCAA Division I leaderboard in eight offensive categories. So what a perfect opportunity to connect with Greeny, share his screen, get into his videos, see what it looks like from the training side of things, and more than that, build the base on what he's done there offensively inside the Aggies program. Again, make sure you subscribe, leave us some comments, and we hope you enjoy the show. Green, Greeny, what's up, my man? Doing great. 85, a little bit of a breeze. It's warming up in Las Cruces, Sheets. Hey, thanks for having us. It's very cool for our program. It's always warm in Las Cruces, even in December. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's get into a lot because we're going to expand upon hitting inside this, and we're going to end up sharing your screen and looking through some hitting videos that you've got of your, your hitters and your offense. But let's start here, man. Fifth year, New Mexico State. And we were That's laughing right. before we started recording, 26th year overall in coaching. Now, you started coaching in 1994. I just want to make sure all the viewers are on the same page. I was 13. So <laughs> you you are a bow down to you. You have the knowledge on the call. How's, how's that make you feel right now? Well, uh, old, but uh, it also – it's a very it's – it's one of those beneficial statements in terms of if you, if you don't play professional baseball, there is a benefit. You can start coaching earlier, so I guess that's what I'm going to hang my hat to. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, there's so much to talk about, and, again, we could go down the litany list of things that are happening there for your team, but let, let's just run through this group. Uh, leading the NCAA in eight offensive categories. We're talking team batting average all the way through hits and runs, um, slugging percentage, home runs uh, on base percentage. But I think one of the biggest when you look at the stat page is that you are plus 10 walks to strikeout ratio. And that is not factoring in the fact you have over 80 HVP. So just take me into what is going on inside that Aggie offense right now. <laughs> well, that that's probably the most – prideful statistic that, that I've ever heard at 34 games into the season, you know, as yeah. a coach, particularly a hitting coach, you know, that's always your goal each and every sure. year. You talk to your kids. Can we be one-to-one? -one? Don't include the HPP. Can you just be one-to-one? -one? And typically with the HPP, you're going to be one-to-one -one if you've yeah. got some somewhat of an offense. But for what these kids have done, if you look at the ratios individually of just about every hitter, we're even to plus our lead off guy is like plus 15, just on strikeouts to walks, not including the HPP. So mm. It's been really exciting. Uh, it was a goal of ours. That's the most exciting thing, Sheets, for us, was that was something that with this veteran club we said going into the season, if we want to make a run at winning a championship or if we want to position ourselves to win a championship mm -hmm. in the lack you go to Mesa, it's a very large park. You've got to really work the counts. You've got to play hard. You're going to win four to three pitch and play defense. Mm -hmm. And for us, our goals going in were we have got to improve as a program in two-strike hitting. And, boy, have they done that. We're really proud of them. I've got some things that I'd like to share and, and look forward to sharing later on uh, in this extra innings cast. But um, it, it's pretty prideful, man. It, it's it's something that we know if you can do a good job as a hitting coach, as a program, if you can dominate that two-strike thing, then all of a sudden you start to see a lot more patience. Earlier in the count, your kids aren't afraid to hit with two strikes, and that's really what we're talking about. So these guys have taken it and run with it, uh, and, and we've done some really good things with two strikes, which has given us a plus ratio. That's the goal. If we get yeah. through the season plus – uh, <laughs> that will be incredible. So I've never done it. I've done it with HPP. I've never been a part of it, I should say. Wow. Uh, I'm really proud of these kids, and I've got some stories to share. There's some, been some people who have really impacted this 2019 Aggie baseball team. So currently sitting at 25 and 9, which is impressive in itself. And I think when you look at, aside from year one, the turnaround that's happened there, BG, when you're looking at 
I think it's 109 wins over three years. I think you've been three straight nationally ranked recruiting classes. Uh, you've sent 10 players into professional baseball and certainly more to come. Uh, there's just something that's really happening there. So I think if I'm paying attention to this, take us into the locker room real quick. Kind of paint the picture of what it looks like and smells like. But more than that, what has been the culture that you've been able to build this turnaround upon? That's a great question. You know, it starts with people and the type of people that we have at Sheets. I've got it's an interesting take on this thing. You know, I came in guns a blazing, the three mm -hmm. pillars of the program that we were going to attract recruits and we were going to sell the recruits. But what ends up happening is people choose your program and it's not necessarily us choosing them. It's we've got a brand that people are attracted to. And that brand, I think, is yeah. character, integrity and family. Those mm -hmm. are the things that we're selling in the recruiting process. What we sell when the kids get here in terms of culture, there's a whole bunch of components to building it. But for us, it starts with the people and it starts in that dugout. You know, when a coach is talking or a teammate is talking, it's body language up, it's eye contact, mm -hmm. it's respect, and it's an understanding that it's not about you and it's about your team. And that's really where it starts. Wow. Uh, Dean Wellums uh, with Team Elite has been a big part mm -hmm. of my family, has been a part of your family at Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a part of our family now, Dean, and, and one of the things that we talk about with Dean's program is, is that we recognize that it's a privilege to be a member of this team, mm -hmm. and that we promise to place the needs of the team above our own. So that's the foundation, and then with that comes all the little things that we do. Meet the professor, slogans across the locker room, every day a classroom setting, something about being a better person, and that's what we attack. We attack people. I think of as a coach, if you can attack the type of people that you have, you're going to get a better baseball player because they're going to be present. They're going to live in the moment. They're going to respect their teammates and they're going to respect the process and the work that they're going to put in to be a good player. But culture is first and foremost, you know, I saw this on Twitter just the other day and it was through coach Corbin. Yes. He, uh, you, did you see that same I one? I did hundred percent. And I sent it to our kids and I said, this is exactly what we're talking about. And it might just be six words, but this is our program in itself. Mm -hmm. You have to understand in our program that we will choose culture and character over talent and skill. You have to do that. When you make that statement, particularly with that lineup card each and every day, which we tell our players, that lineup card is my statement of integrity. Mm -hmm. So when that thing goes up, it's going to be about how hard you play, how hard you compete, and how much the team really matters to you. So I think that's how we've been able to build it. But for us, uh, we put culture above everything. We spend a ton of time on it. We do three weeks of culture training, get the kids together. And then the biggest thing, Sheets, I think, as a coach, is be positive. You have to be positive. Sure. It's so easy to get negative. There's so many parts of the game that are negative, and that's part of our mantra is just clap your hands, expect great things to happen, believe in your kids, love your kids. It's not about me and my wins and, and us winning. It's about them. And I think every time you look out there, particularly when your kids are struggling, they're the ones struggling, and you got to be in their corner for them. And I think once you get that, uh, I think you got a chance to build something special and you can do little things to really build it. And if you get a if you get a great group together like we've got, when we put the field together and break it down, batting practice right now we're at 43 seconds, and it's an incredible run with the stopwatch and our kids celebrate it. Uh, wow. Those things you can build. But at the end of the day, I just think you've got to understand as a coaching staff and coach, it's got to be culture, it's got to be character over talent and skill. It's really important when making those decisions. Obviously, you got to have great players, but when it's close you got to play the kid with the heart and the team is first. So for us, we really put a high premium priority on that. Well, I, knowing in the way that I do, I know that bleeds perfectly right into what we're going to talk about today, which is all wrapped up in this offense and all wrapped up into the swing. So when you are talking about the core beliefs inside of what you think uh, a truly effective offense is, answer that part, but then let that walk yourself into what you think the core beliefs are that you have inside of what an efficient swing would look like. Take us into that. Oh. Yeah, two different things. You know, when yeah. you talk about an offense, what we're trying to build, and it starts with recruiting, but you're trying to build a balanced offense. And I think mm -hmm. balance big word sheets. Offensively, your kids have got to place the program and the needs of the program above their own. And when I say that, I mean, when you get into that box, first and foremost, the ability to compete and the body language that you give off, that sure. is in terms of when you have your vision of your offense, mm -hmm. when people walk away from you, you know, they might talk about your power, they stay behind the baseball or they execute, they can score without getting hits, they'll take an HBP, they're a good short game team. But first and foremost, your offense has got to be entirely based around compete and how that looks. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, you know, obviously in, in today's showcase world, we, we miss some of that. It's okay yeah. to strike out. I don't believe it's okay to strike out. It's college baseball. 
it's not professional baseball. But in terms of our offense and in terms of what's important to me, number one, it's compete. Number two, it's number two, it's balance and that understanding of as an offensive player, there's so many things that go into being a good offensive player. Offense isn't hitting, offense is scoring runs, which means do you have the ability to mm-hmm. find a runner, hit a fly ball, hit a ground ball, take an HBP because it's safer than opening up? Well, the new rules are doing a bunch for that. Sure. Um, can you put the ball in play? Can you hit a home run, an extra base hit? And then the part that we lose sight of as an offense is what are we doing on the bases? You know, are we false breaking? Are we creating some pressure? Uh, is there a ball and dirt system in place? So I think when you think about offense, you really have to go into it as a coach in terms of what is our identity in terms of our talent? What is our identity in terms of who we want our talent to be? And mm-hmm. from a standpoint, and from that part, for me, it goes into balance. You'd love to have speed at the top and bottom, and you'd love to have power in the middle. I personally believe, obviously, I'm a little biased. We play in an offensive park, but I don't like to give outs in college baseball. I like to let okay. the kids back. So we're going to build towards that. I'm going to spend more time in practice organizations, spending time on driving the ball gap to gap and swing development than I am on spending time on the short game. But that's my personal philosophy. And I think that's really important. Um, but then in terms of the other piece of the offense, the driving force on base percentage, that's the driving force of offensive baseball. How do you get that done? Well, you recruit really good players. Number one, uh, <laughs> you make Jason sure <laughs> Uh, it makes they're into the weight room, you know, um, early decisions. A lot of times are based on strength and they're based on offensive approach. And we'll get into that in a second, but the kids have got to be physical. It's a strong man's game. You've got to be able to let the ball travel, make late decisions. That happens a lot with strength mm-hmm. and do that. Then we can get into offensive approach, which means where do we want to hit the ball? What are we trying to do in those types of things? But my vision as an offensive coach is number one, compete, create competitive players and people, Mm-hmm. And work, establish that in practice each and every day. Number two, understand that there has to be offensive balance and you incorporate that into your practice planning. Mm-hmm. And number three, understanding what your offensive approach is based in, for us, it's on base percentage. And that's really where it comes from. I think power drives on base percentage. I think being good hitters drives on base percentage. And a two strike approach drives on base percentage. At the end of the day, and we talk about it when you watch Moneyball, when you get that C- uh, 100%. Percent. Says, do we care if it gets on base? Yeah. No, we do not. And that's how we look at it. We talk about that a lot. And I think that's my, why you might be seeing such high ratios right now. Our kids are really driving mm-hmm. off the fact that they have high on base percentage. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I have to ask I think the, the easy follow up is for someone paying attention to this competition. How are you laying that out for your players? How are you defining it for them? How are you really nurturing that competitive environment that really the competitive players then start to rise at the top where everyone else can follow them? How are you doing that? Well, it starts with practice. And we put such a premium in terms of practice. And, Sheets, I don't mean driving the ball in the gap. I mean, number one, what are you doing on your own? If you want to be a good player, and and we cannot dictate what you do outside of our 40 or 30 or 20 or wherever eight-hour week, wherever we are for that week. But in terms of dictating time, we expect to see the kids in the cage on their own. And that's because we make a commitment to each other in the recruiting process that says our big selling point in recruiting is development. We're going to talk about we're going to develop your skills, give you the best opportunity to get out and play professional baseball. We're going to develop your skills as a person and turn you into a better person if you aren't already. And we're going to work at those two things. But we're going to we're going to compete in those areas with each other. But we expect to see the kids in the cage on their own. And then that builds into one of our core values of the program, which is to be present and what that means for us is, is when you're in the cage, what are you working on? Are you working on separation? Are you working on your lower half? Is it balanced? Are you just working on rhythm? And so many kids these days, in my opinion, when they come to our program, and I'm sure so many coaches would agree with you at, at the younger level, they don't know how to work. It just the repetition equates to work. Well, not, that's not necessarily the case. So we really try to balance that. But then we try to do as much accountability, charting, you name it, in practice as we can with punting, with two-strike approach, with zone awareness, uh, with where you hit the ball, with as many competitive things as we can in batting practice. And then I think something that's really important for us in terms of establishing it and letting guys rise to the shot, the top sheets is I think it's really important to create consistency in your habits. And we do it as a staff. And this is something that I've just evolved into. But 
we'll work on our execution round in September and we'll put it in place and we'll work on our bunt round in practice and our operative field round in practice and our gap and drive round in practice. And we will set up what we're going to do in the spring and September and then we'll practice it for four months. When we come back in January, our kids know exactly what to do. And I think that's a big key. And those are mistakes that I've made. The, your kids, when they know exactly what they're doing, they got a chance to be more confident. Yep. And so what we did, and we spent the entire summer, we have a coach's retreat. We go out to Tucson and we play some golf and we, we stick ourselves in a room for eight hours. And we talk about what do we want to get accomplished this year. And then we come out and we put it into practice. So in terms of enabling kids to rise to the top, I think it really starts with giving them the opportunity to be confident. Well, how do you do that? Create a consistent regimen for them that they can get better at that. And then in doing that, create the regimen that you think is going to impact them. This is obviously a lead into the mechanics that we're going to talk about. But I just think from an offensive approach and a practice approach standpoint, create those five or six drills that you like, get them in practice and teach them to do the right things and the right things every day, and then sit back and let them happen. So all of your work is really put into the drill and the practice and the execution that you want to see in practice. And then you step back and then you let your kids go to work. (laughs) <laughs> and I think that's what you're seeing with us this year. We've got a veteran club, but that's yeah. what I've learned this year on my journey with our kids. Uh, we put a lot more premium effort into our drills and our practice and then sat back and said, hey, the best players are going to be able to execute these skills. If you want to be one of them and get on the field, then get better and do it. And we've really been hands off in that regard. Um, and we've had a very consistent lineup of players. We've played 10 or 11 guys. The exciting part is now the freshmen are getting better. BG, that is fantastic insight, man. Again, us working here to pull back the curtain on you, your program, your offense, and what's going on there. We really appreciate that stuff. And if you're interested in hearing more from Brian, he's been on the podcast a couple times. Check out episode 42. He's with Link Jarrett talking about putting up crooked numbers. Fantastic interview that we had with those guys. And also on episode 115, we're live from the Dallas Convention. We're talking through a lot of things culturally, uh, what's going on inside of the New Mexico State baseball program. So let's get into this because I think we talk a lot about our in our resources about growth and personal growth. And that's a great opportunity, as we were talking before we hit recording, about the younger coach really – understanding that, man, this is a journey. You are going to fail. You're going to figure some things out early in your career. You'll laugh about them 10 years from now. But, man, year 26, looking back, how have you developed as a hitting coach? And I think inside of that, have they have those views shifted or have they stayed the same? How have you really been able to come to the understanding that you have right now of offensive play? Oh, boy, that, boy, that, it's been quite a journey. Um, you know, I, I think the first thing, Sheets, if I could give advice to if, – or if I could take myself back when I was 25 yes. years of age, which would be the, the advice I would give myself back then when I would say, number one, listen uh, and open up your ears and be really interested in just mm-hmm. growth, development. Uh, we at 25, even though we are the smartest people in the world and we do have all of the answers, mm-hmm. uh, as you get older, you have less answers because That's you've right. been learning. Um, but I think the difference between me at 25 as a coach or any of us, I think in my age bracket and now are the resources, if you look at this podcast then have this opportunity mm-hmm. and, and I maybe had it to go to the library or, um, you know, it was so different. There is so much information out there. I would tell myself to go back. What's really important to me? What do I believe in? And then mm-hmm. go see if number one, if I'm seeing a lot of it at the big league level, And then number two, whatever I do see that matches up with my core beliefs, allow that to be your philosophy. But at the same time, what I did and a mistake that I made was I would look through magazines and newspaper articles and pictures, and I would find those those moves that matched what I believed in. And then I wouldn't cut out the moves that didn't match what I believe in. So yet these were pictures of big league hitters. So that would be the biggest thing that I would suggest is just Go out and learn. Get to clinics. Get to the barnstormers. Get to the ABCA. The convention is unbelievable. And just sit and just listen and be wide open for information because I remember as a hitting coach, and I still not necessarily teach the exact same thing, uh, but I remember being blown away at watching Gary Ward at the ABCA convention talk about hitting. And it wasn't necessarily the information that he was giving that blew me away. But it was the system that he had in place, that it was A to B to C to D to E. Mm-hmm. And that really clicked with me. It made a major impact. And that's how I teach today. 
mm-hmm. is from stance to stride separation to launch position to working from the ground up to getting slotted to rotating the contact to finish but it was that system that i learned uh, at a very young age because i went to the convention and i was just fortunate enough to be there to see it so right. get out and learn as much as you can that's how it's changed for me my i've evolved uh, i'm really interested in learning number one and then number two what's really important to me is i'm not so interested in sounding smart i'm really interested in just scoring a lot of runs so for me <laughs> so for yeah. me let's get these 18 to 22 year olds let's give them the two or three most simple things that they can focus on two or three simple swing keys, two or three simple offensive approach keys, and then how can I take those things, which we know are 10 to 15 keys, put them into practice, and bring them back out to the kids in a very simple form. I, I think that's what it's about. And, and I think when you listen to professional hitting coaches talk, they're pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think when you talk to people with a lot of experience, it's pretty simple. And I think that's the most important thing, because for me, uh, effective communication are in keys of three. And if I could offer any advice back to myself, at 25, I had 10 parts of the slot position. Today, we just call it the slot position, and here's what it looks like. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now here comes the really cool part of this technological advancement that we've made here in the National Office, BG, and you're going to be a part of this. Uh, right, in, inside of these extra innings interviews, we're going to get a chance to share your screen. You're going to take us into your office there yeah. in Las Cruces and, and really show us some videos, things that – you've recorded that you think uh, accentuate what you're doing offensively, and then you get to give the language and understanding behind it. And that's going to be the beauty of this. Our coaches can learn uh, from you in detailed manner with a visual opportunity. And so we're going to do that right now. So let's get into your computer. Go ahead and share your screen with us. Okay, absolutely. Okay, so looking live at BG's screen, take us into these drills. And I think the beauty of it is, I know you're going to get really in-depth and passion on is that this is the foundation of which you think everything starts from. So go from there. See, I really do. And, and, you know, a big part of this is just when you, when you start to talk about what's important, well, for us, it was two strike approach. We were going to have to improve at two strike hitting this year. We had a lot of HBPs last year. So on paper, our ratio and on-base percentage was good, but it had to improve. Well, we thought a lot about this and I talked to as many hitting instructors as I can. And I think back to Pat Murphy mm-hmm. and I thought his teams at Arizona state, uh, when I was at UCLA, you couldn't strike them out and they never chased. In fact, they had a couple of years where they had more walks and strikeouts. So I got in, in contact with coach Murph when I asked him and I said, coach, how did you do it? What was the key? And I'm expecting the keys to be a two strike approach in terms of choking up on the bat or getting up on top of the plate or getting the foot down early, widening out sure. all of those things. And he said, well, it's basically two things. Number one, you don't chase. And if you do, we're going to have a problem. But two, um, you got to give your kids the confidence that they're not afraid of a ball coming in. Mm-hmm. And so we spent a ton of time on this. So, yeah, I'll go through these, these videos. But I think from a foundational standpoint, and this isn't a secret that we're giving away, uh, this is we're going to work really hard at a pitcher going in off, and we're going to work really hard mechanically of staying tight within the slot, the barrel's going to stay above the hands, and then we're going to be able to fight that pitch off and hit it up the middle. I think when your kids have the confidence to do that, well, number one, they won't if you don't give them the repetition. So you got to give them the repetition. This is one of our daily drills that we do. Every day we're doing this, and you've got to define it as a coach, but let me roll through some of these. This is uh, I'll start with Joey Ortiz. Uh, he's a junior in our program. He's currently leading the country in RBIs. He uh, actually hit with a cycle yesterday and had eight RBIs. But you can see here, and Joey's using the line for his feet, um, but this, this ball, is it's, it's on him. And I want to note, look how tight this elbow is. I mean, he is really tight right there. And that barrel is still on top of his hands. That ball has absolutely jammed him, and he's hitting it up the middle. And those are those confidence pieces. Uh, this is Tristan Peterson, uh, who was leading the country in RBIs until Ortiz overtook him just the other day. Um, but again... This ball is absolutely hard in on these kids, and they're going to work to get that elbow in nice and tight, which is going to keep the barrel above the hands, and they're going to work the confidence to hit that ball up the middle. The big key on doing these drill sheets, and then here's a freshman, Kevin Jimenez, who is right now, I believe he's plus 10 with his walk-to-strikeout ratio. And this is a freshman who didn't exemplify that in the fall. 
So again, you've got junior, you've got junior, and you've got freshman, all different swings, different setups, but we're working every day. As you can see, that tee is hard in on the <laughs> That's it, off. That's off by about six inches, but he's yeah, all over it. It's uncomfortable. It really mm. is. But I think what's really important is, number one, is when you set this up, is that your kids understand, look, you have to put the tee, when you get to foot strike and land, this tee has got to be slightly inside your front foot, which really means you're beat. And I think when you look at those videos and these kids doing that, you can see that tee placement is so important. Uh, there's another time to put the ball that's hard in, move it up into your stance, and then tell them to hit the, keep the ball fair mm -hmm. as you're going to be hitting out in front of it a little bit. But this is an escape drill, and this is a foundational drill that says we're going to stay behind the ball, we're not going to be afraid to get jammed, and if we can have that confidence, that can impact two-strike hitting, that can impact your confidence with two strikes. If you can do that, I think as an offensive coach, you give your kids a better opportunity to swing at the right pitches. Okay, those are phenomenal. I think any coach is seeing exactly what you're trying to get across. I think let's go to the next layer here. What's the feedback that carries over from the drill to the player to the confidence that comes back to you as a coaching staff? Like, hey, man, I'm glad we do this drill because I feel, you know, I'm at my best in, in a two-strike count because you, your kids have to be saying that right now. Well, and this was a new drill that we really put into our program this year. We've done that in the past, obviously, okay. more individualized. But we made this really program drill that we were going to do this every day, which we do. It's part of batting practice. It's actually part of the last thing that you do before you step into the cage. But I can tell you the feedback sheets, what you just described, I've heard that from three, four of not the new kids, but the veterans. Mm -hmm. The kids who have that coach, that's really tightened me up. It's given me more confidence. But really, they give you the mechanical feedback. And I think the coach sees more of boy, if you stay with that mechanical approach from an from a approach standpoint, it's going to really change things. But I know personally it's tightened a lot of our kids up. It's really important. Any kids who are blowing open with their hip, they have a hard time with that drill. It really keeps you online with your hips until it's time to rotate properly, or at least from my philosophy uh, where we rotate a little bit later. So uh, it, it's been really, really positive for us. The kids notice it. And then you get to teach more because even in that drill you can talk about barrel above hands you can understand where your slot needs to be and it's a drill where if you're off at all you're going to get blown up and then the biggest thing when you start the drill is the kids when you first do it is like coach this isn't normal this is like you're on another planet there's an alien sitting next to you sure but then over time they're able to figure it out and do it it's just i could be like running the four minute mile nobody could do it and then everybody could do it so yeah. um that part's been cool um and that leads us into you know, you, if you work really hard in off, uh, then let's work really hard off off and get confident there too. So those are the types of things that we do. We really like to bounce it around. And what I love is that transitions perfectly into this next set of videos. Let's get back on your screen. So yeah, sheets. No, that that's again. That's another fun part to talk about is you're working your kids in off. Give them the confidence. Uh, that if somebody comes in late, they can handle it. Obviously, that's not a spot where you're going to want to drive the baseball, but it's an escape. And the more escape plan that you have, the more confident your hitters are going to be. Another part of that confidence builder for us, uh, part of two-strike hitting, again, is the ability to hit a ball that's a ball off and it's down, the toughest pitch to hit, the one that you have to let it travel. So, again, this is another part of our thing that we do on a daily basis. I'll show you three different kids, uh, Tristan Carranza, who has got 14 home runs and takes a ton of pride in two-strike hitting. Uh, that's him right there. This is Tristan Peterson with 13 home runs. And notice these balls are right at the knees. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. You know, we, we can work balls that are up, but let's practice challenge pitches, balls that are off, a ball and a half, two balls off. And the kids, and you're going to have to reach a little bit here, but you're really going to have to stay into your legs. And then I'll show you Eric Mingus is currently leading the conference and hitting uh, unbelievable grinder who works tireless worker. But if you look at what Eric does here, this is a variation on the drill, but he's practicing getting slotted and then he'll take it back and then he'll get to contact. And again, holding balance, hitting the baseball behind your front foot and then driving through it. And that ball's really off. So you can see he's hitting that thing down the first baseline. But for all these guys, this is an opportunity to, again, practice confidence of pitches that are difficult. And this is one of the thing sheets for me that I didn't do a good enough job of as a coach early on. We would talk about these pitches, have the ability to be tough enough to 
let it travel and fight it off. Have the ability to cover the outer half. But what I wouldn't do the good enough job of was you got to give your kids the repetitions. They've got to have the quality reps. That's where the confidence comes. So uh, this is something that we do a lot of. I'll slow this down here with Tristan. And you can see even there, the start of the swing, we're tight, and then we'll come off being tight. Mm. And then we'll get through it. And they're all keeping their hands down. So that's that's the second part. And those would really be two foundational things that start with, from an offensive approach, we have three keys. We want to be aggressive. We want to drive the middle of the field. And we want to be tough with two strikes. Very simple, not a very sexy offensive approach, but those are the basic dynamics of it. And then from there, you demand excellence. So where does that start? We work backwards. So we start with two-strike hitting. If you work backwards into two-strike hitting, then you can get into the most important thing that I could share with anybody today, and that is as an offensive coach, demand from your hitters that they control the strike zone. Whatever it is for you, if it's, if it's belt to shoulders, if it's shoe tops to knee, if it's knee to belt, whatever your philosophy is, demand it from your players and then make them accountable for it, chart it, give them understandings of why, show them when you're really good, how you're chasing, if not, things like that. These are areas that I think can really impact a lack of chase. Trust on the inside part, trust on a ball that's off. In doing that, you're creating confidence with two strikes. I think if you do that, you give you guys a much better opportunity to control the zone early in the count because they're not afraid to hit with two strikes. Well, you read my mind because I saw the the progression of where we were going there. You're building the base of yeah. who these guys are and the confidence level. We're just going to continue to move them forward. Now we're going to get a little a little tougher. We're going to get on the field. We're going to dial up a couple machines. And I love this drill that you're getting ready to show us uh, of, of the – but the talk through of the ideas behind why this shows up on the field. And then, again, let's transition it to that player. So when that player talks to you about what this drill has done for them, I'm going to let you get into that as well. So let's take it back to your screen. Yeah, she, that, that this is a fun one. Um, this was a drill that we – up and we made it up based on our preparation for a pitcher that we were going to face. We were going to face a specific pitcher with a big breaking ball in terms of a change of plane, and he was pretty firm in terms of his fastball. And I just think the more repetition that you can give your players, he's going to build to their confidence. And I think as a player, as you know, that if a coaching staff is preparing you to the best of your ability – so for me going into a series, I just want our guys to know that I've worked really hard to give them all the information possible for the upcoming weekend, and then it's into their hands. Um, so that's really important to us. So this was a drill that we made up. It's a two-strike drill. Uh, it's a multiple machine drill. We put a, a, a hack attack, the, the big dog, uh, that's on the behind part, and then we put a short, small hack attack on the front, the junior. And we have our coaches put both of their hands up, and simultaneously their arms will drop and they'll just either drop it into a curveball or they'll drop it into a fastball. But if you're facing somebody who is a fastball change guy or is a fastball slider guy, mm -hmm. we just want to dial up the concentration. There is no better two-strike drill because there's no rhythm in this drill. This is entirely hand-eye and it's about approach. But the exciting part is, is you can teach your kids and they get to pick. Okay, guys, it's coming out. You're getting breaking ball or you're getting fastball, you pick in terms of you pick the breaking ball and then you can turn that drill into take the fastball if you want to practice neutral count or runner in scoring position hitting, or you can turn it into you can teach your guys, hey, just do this drill. I want you to hit both balls and I want you to drive the middle of the field on both of them. When the drill is done, your kids get to give you some feedback in terms of, you know, coach, I was really anticipating the fastball and I reacted to the off-speed pitch or I was really anticipating the off-speed and I reacted to the fastball. Mm -hmm. And then you have teaching moments with your kids. So I'll show you the video here that we've got. Uh, this is Logan Petrell. He's our leadoff hitter, uh, probably our best two-strike hitter because he hits the ball the opposite side. He's not afraid to get jammed. He will pull the ball. He did that all weekend, but he's not afraid to let the ball travel. So here we go. This is a two-strike drill that we do. We do this once a week. Uh, you've got your coaches out there. They drop both arms and they pick a pitch that they're going to drive it into. Mm -hmm. And what you find with your hitters is that the next thing you know is their lower half gets really quiet. They really make late decisions. We utilize the turf. Uh, and when watching this video, we like to put cones out in the fall and remind kids, hey, don't start your swing until the ball gets to these specific areas of our AstroTurf. So 
And then this is what it looks like if you're a coach. This is what it should look like just in terms of both hands down so the kids can't cheat. Uh, yeah. They know what's going on. And that's a really important part is when you look at Matt there is he's just he's understanding, look, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in twice. Uh, and then your kids, it's a very, it's a difficult drill to challenge drill. But again, it gives them an opportunity to prepare. It is a great two-strike drill. And again, it's one other thing to give yourselves the confidence. Look, we're going to practice two-strike hitting. We're going to demand that it become important. And again, I just think philosophically, if you're good with that in college, this isn't professional baseball. We are in college baseball. We can put the ball in play with two strikes. The defense isn't at the premium level that it is. The scouting information isn't at the premium level that it is. So for us, we'll put the ball in play. We want to make people play defense. Um, that's the first part. But then the second part is, Coach, you keep talking about two-strike hitting. and you're, That's all we're talking about. But yet you're one of the national leaders in runs scored and RBIs and home runs and slugging. Well, that's, I believe that that's the foundation of it. If you've got strong kids who are willing to let the ball travel, uh, you give them plenty of opportunity to practice hitting breaking balls, and you teach them the understanding of importance of two-strike hitting, then I think you've got a chance to have better zone discipline, zone control, and zone awareness earlier in the count. And your kids won't chase. And that's really what I think the foundation is. I think what I like most about that drill, BG, let that film roll just a couple more times. Yeah. It, it, it's the variability that you're giving – your kids, hey, I'm going to work on this, or hey, I feel comfortable, you know, thinking this way or reacting this way or working on my timing this way. Uh, again, back to that feedback question, what are the players giving you in terms of uh, wh how they appreciate this drill and what it's done for them at the plate? Well, yeah, when we, they, when we first started it, actually, our kids really enjoyed it because they felt like they were getting preparation for the upcoming series. But this has turned into fastball change. This has turned into fastball cutter but really sheets with the feedback that we get from our kids, uh, which helps us give them the information back has been, it's a total mixed bag. Like mm -hmm. I said, some kids are sitting soft and reacting to fastball. Some would do the other way, but the part that we get mm -hmm. the best feedback out of is when we say, try this, how about sit soft, react to fastball, sit hard, react to soft, and then see what happens. And then we mm -hmm. get to with each other work in terms of, Hey, man, what are you more comfortable with? Well, coach, look, I'm a lot more comfortable going fastball and reacting to off speed. Awesome. And then if you're early a lot of times, well, how about you try this? Let's sit soft. Let's see if you're quick enough to react to fastball. Let's see how that goes for you. And we're able to kind of come up with an answer together, which is exciting. That's outstanding. There's a third video over there on the right side. Can you take us into what's going on there in the tunnel? Yeah, this is Joey Ortiz. Uh, this is an adjustment that we made with Joey uh, early in the season. Uh, Joey's having an unbelievable season, 63 RBIs as a junior. Mm. Uh, like I said, he hit for the cycle yesterday with eight RBIs. Uh, he's made a true commitment to his body, and he's one of the better defenders in the West. In fact, he is an outstanding defender. Um, he's hitting 433, I think, with seven or eight home runs, but uh, doesn't strike out much. But one of the things that Joey did was lay back. He, he, Joey had a tremendous skill of hitting the ball the other way. Uh, but he carved the ball a little bit. He would push the ball a little bit to the opposite side. So this really started with him, and this has become a drill for all of us. Um, we'll offset the machine slightly on the first base side. We'll bring it into him, and we'll ask the hitter to hit it inside their front foot, not out in front, and we'll ask him to pull it. We'll ask him to either pull with a ground ball or with a fly ball, each way doing one big thing, and that's getting you slotted. But I want to show you this drill. This is something that we did with Joey. He was coming out of his backside. And he was lifting up too much. So this is a drill that we do with a lot of our hitters. We actually have them bust their front side and drive their back knee to the ground for this major piece right here. And that is, is when you feel your swing, that you truly stay inside a box. So it doesn't enable you or there's no forward move. There's no tilt. There's no backward move. So any of those hitters that you're having a problem where they're losing their posture, which a lot of us have, mm -hmm. where they get out of posture. They break their stack. We actually have them put their back knee on the ground, but we do this not for the back knee, not for the front knee, but for that feeling of true balance. And once you can establish that with your hitter, then you can obviously dial back the front leg. But this is a drill that's really promoted some balance for us. Go volume down. You want me to start over there? No, because that's – no, it's good, man. Cool, huh? Wow. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. As you're talking through that, that pitch is coming in hard on him. 
He's getting the barrel out in front. He's keeping it fair. I'm guessing you're also talking about the spin off the ball, making sure that it's true spin and not top spin with some curve to it. But more than that, he's balanced at the end. Like he's got to feel very, very confident at the finish of that swing. Yeah, they really do. This is a cool drill. And again, this was something that we we kind of we made this one up. And, and not I don't mean offset hitting. Everybody has done that, but there's a formula in terms of what we're trying to do. If you've got kids that aren't getting into that slot position, if you take an offset approach, pull it into them, and don't let them hit the ball way out in front. But you got to hit it just inside front foot. That's the goal. And if you tell them either fly ball or ground ball, and we actually had the kids on this drill, Joey, I want you to hit fly balls down the pull side line, if you can believe a hitting coach telling somebody to hit pull side fly balls. That goes against the sacrament of hitting in college baseball, right? Um, but in doing that, you end up getting those kids tighter with their back elbow, which gets you back to the ability to hit the ball to the opposite side. So that was one of the things that we do, and we ask them to hit fly balls. And this is a drill that we do. We'll ask kids to either hit pull side ground balls. We'll ask them to hit pull side fly balls. All with the intent of really – getting yourself inside to the slot and understanding you got to hit the ball deep. So if you put the parameters on the drill, it's really effective. If you don't determine for them uh, where to hit it, then they just got a chance to get out for outside and hook everything. And then you're just counterproductive to what you're doing. Uh, but if you really manage the hit it inside your front toe, then the incredible part sheets on this drill is after doing this a couple of times is you have your hitters back off. And now say, okay, make contact with this pitch as your back leg. And I want you to hit fly balls to right field. And you want to talk about kids just hammering the ball because yes. they're hitting, but they're still tight. And then that's the most important thing. So, and then the other thing that we do, we, we trust the machines. We use a lot of machines. I know professional baseball does, but I really like machine hitting. I think it really opens you up for rhythm. I think it, it gives you an opportunity to establish when you start. And I think it really is a good owner of if you have bad balance within your stride you feel it and you hate hitting off a machine. I think it forces you to have better balance. You know, while we're, while we're sitting here looking at these guys and I think all the videos that we've seen so far, Brian, I, I, I'm just thinking that any hitting coach is watching this and, and what jumps off to me is individuality. And I think, you know, certainly from the college level, you're getting kids who are already really good players and you're trying to develop and grow them and move them, but you're letting your guys be who they are just inside of your structure and inside of your culture. Is that about right? I'm glad you asked that question because that, that's different for me as a coach. Okay. Um, I used to be big with everybody. I've always been a, a big believer in it, trying to establish a one-to-one -one ratio with your hitters because that would equate to on-base percentage. That would equate to scoring runs. I've always believed that, and I will always believe that. But Sheets, to give you an example, in our program with two strikes, and when I say our program, this is how much I've changed and evolved as a coach. I used to have – for our program, you're going to, in two-strike hitting, for example, you're going to get to the toe early, you're going to move up two inches on the plate, you're going to choke up, and you're going to hit it very deep. Basic mechanics of two-strike hitting, I think most coaches would agree that that's the case. Well, with our program right now, I think it's interesting that at the start of the year, I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you widen up. I don't care if you get down early. I don't care if you have a two-foot leg lift. <laughs> if you can compete, put the ball in play and not chase, you can do what you do. But I will tell you this, within our program, it's really important they have a two-strike approach. Yeah. And I think that gave them a lot more confidence. And you even look in these videos, then they can find out the answer for themselves. I think that's so important. That's something that I didn't do. And I'm just trying to be a better coach and a better player's coach in terms of let them be the best players that they can be, put it into their hands and let them go. Um, we don't have a defined physical stance or move, uh, but we do have a program stance, and that is compete and don't chase and work your tail off to not strike out. So, um, and you find that individuality comes out there, and I think you also find that the players know that you got a little more trust in them, but most importantly, you enable them to get to their most rhythmic, comfortable spot where they can compete at what they think to be their highest level. Well, I think it transitions really well because we've talked about the different drills and ideas that you have inside of building the base of your of your players. Uh, it, it goes into this, man. Simplifying and growth as a hitting coach has really helped you boil your belief system down to really a, a, a core of drills that you think are program-wide drills that accentuate exactly what you're looking for inside of those swings. You want to take us into that? 
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, she ta- you know, I've had 15, 20, 30 drills. We all have. Uh, yeah. And what's good to have, you, you have to have those in your back pocket for the individual player in terms of this might help this player and right. this might help this player. But, you know, in terms of being individualized and letting the kids go, for us, it's look, in our program, for, for me as their hitting coach, look, there's sure. three things that are really important to me. Get your kids to separate. Not enough guys coming out of high school, particularly get their hands back there's too many guys that are inside they push the ball even with all the launch angle talk you know you've got high elbows but you've still got the knob inside the body so guys are really not getting separated there's a lot of power that's left on the table or off the table i should say uh the second thing mechanically after getting your kids separated just get the kids to work from the ground up in, the, in its purest most basic form what drill can emphasize rotation what drill can emphasize working from the ground up so we can have proper balance, which will enable us to see the baseball better. And then the third thing is just how tight do you want to get your swings and how important is the slot to you? For us, it's really important. So with those things, uh, we have three drills. We have a leg lift drill, which helps separation. We have what's called a clutch rhythm drill, which helps us work from the ground up. And then we have a slot drill, which is basically just get inside and have slot awareness. So those are the, we obviously have more drills than that, but these are the drills along with, the two strike drills that we do foundationally every day. Hmm. Take us into that. Share that screen. Okay. Okay. So yeah, sheets, we've got three drills that for us, and I think as a hitting coach or, or head coach or, or whatever your offense you want to look like, again, establish some drills that are going to help you with your mechanics. So for us, what's important to me, here I am at 46 years of age, what's important to me after being a hitting coach for the last 20 plus years? Well, number one, is to have balance and separation when they land at their launch position. Not enough kids these days get separated. Number two, get your hitters into working from the ground up. Not enough of our hitters work from the ground up. They start from the belt, they start from the shoulders, and they lose the outer half. So we have what's called a clutch rhythm drill, and I'll demonstrate that. And then we've got a slot drill, and I've spent a lot more time on this getting guys tightened up, but we do this every day. These are our three drills, and again, this is what's important to me. This is what I want to see with our hitters within our swings. Number one, they're separated. Number two, they're balanced and they work from the ground up. And then number three, they have tight swings. So when we come out of our coaches clinic after in Tucson, where we come out and say, what do we want our offense to look like? What do we want our staff to look like? Then from that conversation, we get our hands dirty in terms of what drills are we going to do? And these are the three that we really came up with. And again, Trying to be simple, I'm not interested in 10 drills for the kids. I want them to master these three things, and I think it can really impact their swing. So, um, now in some of these, I demonstrate. So, again, do as I say or demonstrate with big leaguers, not necessarily as I do. Uh, Leg lift drill. It's a two-second hold, and then you're going to notice when the front leg gets down, you're going to really want to feel at this point as the leg comes up, you're using this drill to when the front leg gets down, you feel your hand stay high, almost as if somebody's holding the barrel. I had a really tough time separating as a player, which is why it's probably really important to me. Uh, I lost a lot of opportunity for power because I was too inside the baseball at launch. I didn't get my hands behind my back knee. I was very short. I could hit a single to right field, but I didn't get my hands back. So when your hand front leg gets down, try to hold those hands back create separation not enough kids these days get separated uh clutch rhythm drill your regular stride uh, get to toe touch and then there's a uh, second or two and at that point it's thousand one thousand two from toe touch your front heel will go down your back heel will come up again fighting for separation when that lower half starts to work still keep your hands back keep them up uh, I learned from John Maley a phrase on one of his hitting videos, big league hitting coach. He said, feet, knee, hips, hands last. And I, that really stuck with me. Uh, and this is a drill that we've put in play based on that. Uh, great drill, though. It's called the clutch rhythm drill. So we'll demonstrate it here. Whatever your regular stride is, when you get down, go to toe touch and stop. Number one, feel front heel down, back heel up, hands still remain high, and then just rotate. This is a way to feel your body staying home, not shifting forward, back, over the plate. We get to toe touch, heel down, heel up. You'll notice my weight is 50-50 right there, very important, and then just rotate. It's a really good drill that helps your lower half to work the right way. 
without having to talk yourself through it. And then the slot drill. Get to your proper stride. You're ready to fire your backside. We'll exaggerate it here when we get down. So we'll already get to heel plant. We'll pick the back heel up. And then we're just going to pop our hands into slot three times. Keep the barrel above the hands. Your top hand elbow should be rammed into your gut. And we're going to do it three times, and then we're going to rotate and finish. And one of the things that you'll see on the video not shown here that you can do is you can go to Target, Walmart, uh, Hobby Lobby, go buy a $9 mirror and put it behind your screens and give the kids the opportunity to see themselves. But here it is again, slot drill. Backsides engaged, hands are back. And here we go. One, barrels above hands. Two, barrels above hands. Three, barrels above hands. And then just go. You'll notice the knob is going to be somewhere around the baseball. Not necessarily right at it, but it's going to be pretty close. We tell our right-handed hitters, take your knob to the four hole. We tell our left-handed hitters, take your knob to the six hole. And then just rotate. Again, all of these things, you'll notice one thing, uh, that we're working for balance. We're holding the finish, the backside is engaged, and we're getting a full turn. So those are our drill series. And, uh, and we really feel like they're beneficial to the kids, and we do those on a daily basis. Okay, that is fantastic insight. So just take us into this, and we'll close this thing out. I know you got to get back to uh, working towards a WAC championship and moving throughout your season. But uh, take us into this. Other advice, we've got hitting coaches that are paying attention to this. There's probably some pitching guys, if I would venture to guess, that are watching this as well. But for hitting coaches paying attention to this across all spectrums of it, what advice do you have? What other advice would you offer those folks listening to this? Well, I would tell you that one of the things that I like to do is I like to talk to Coach Claggett, our pitching coach, and Terry and Trev, and I mean our whole staff, but I really like to talk to Claggs. And I think as a hitting guy, talk to the pitching guys. Mm -hmm. We have such a different take. Hey, man, what do you see with our hitters, and what, what, what would you think? Because I look at pitching from a hitting perspective, and we have those perspectives as if we're in the box within the moment. So what I would say is, number one, is talk to your other coaches and, and go out and have those late-night socials. Uh, have a soda and sit down and talk the game. The, the exciting part for me is I love to do that, but I don't like to joust. I want to learn. So mm -hmm. I think it's really important not to share my opinion as if my opinion is I'm not winning an argument. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to win the information battle. That's it. What you want to do is become a better coach. So number one, I would talk to people across the diamond from you. If you're a hitting guy, I'd talk to a pitching guy. I like to do that with Clags. He's been able to help me. In fact, he just talked to one of our hitters the other day, a freshman. Uh, Anthony pitched in the big leagues, and uh, and he, he said, hey, man, I want to talk to Stace. He's one of our, our freshmen. He's a really, really fast player. He's a center fielder. He said, you know, I remember some things that Gardner told me in professional baseball might help him in batting practice. Do get over there. So uh, that's the first thing. And then the second thing I would just say, get to as many clinics, not just as a viewer, but as a participant. I was so fortunate, Sheets, to come to Kentucky when you were there. And Coach Cohen, one of the things that he had for the coaches – was you're going to be required or is, it's very – get out and speak three times a year. I'll tell you what, that was some really great information for me, not from the speaking perspective, uh, which helps, but from the perspective of really getting my information locked in. And I think whatever area you're in, if you're the base running coach, infield coach, hitting coach, your area is locked in. If somebody comes into you with an elevator and says, hey, man, tell me about hitting, you can dial it up in 90 seconds and it's ready to go. Uh, talk to your guys across the line, get out and speak as much as you can, uh, and it'll help your information grow. And then be a great listener. I know I enjoy it. I love learning. All I do is follow baseball on Twitter and Facebook and all those things. Get out and learn because all you're trying to do is to pass it on. And at the end of the day, if your group's having success, then you'll be able to climb as a coach. Uh, it's all about winning for us. It's all about scoring runs as a hitting coach. Other than that, that – there isn't anything more important. So we like scoring runs and we like winning. <laughs> That's awesome. Just like everybody paying attention to this does as well. Yeah. Uh, Greeny, thanks for jumping on with this, my friend. Again, this is an awesome opportunity for us to go extra innings with you, share some great content, have someone sit down, take some feverish notes. Uh, but more than that, just connect with someone that's doing it on the highest level of college baseball, having extreme success, and also more than that is willing to share. I think that's the beauty of this community and where this thing's going. So if you're interested in paying attention to this, make sure you follow Brian on Twitter at BBGreens5. Also follow the program at NM State Baseball. You're going to see some great videos, post-game clips, uh, practice stuff uh, on that Twitter account. 
But also got to give a shout out, and BG, I know you'll you'll appreciate this, to Adam Young, AY, if you're watching yeah. this, man, you have done a fantastic job promoting the program. Uh, I know uh, Brian appreciates you and your efforts to shine a light on the Aggies baseball program. So keep it up, man. People are paying attention. Uh, but, Greeny, thanks for jumping on with us, man. Get back to winning games and scoring runs. We appreciate you. Thanks for including NM State Baseball Sheets. This is a big-time honor and a great opportunity for our program to sit down and talk about what we're doing here. So best of luck, man. You're killing it. Keep it going. And everybody out there, join the ABCA. You'll be better for doing it. Thanks again, Sheets.